This video is brought to you by the Disc Golf Nerd Patreon support team. Go to patreon.com slash discgolfnerd. My people, hello, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you step-by-step -step exactly how I go about dyeing a disc using a clear glue bed. I will be using iDye Poly and ProChem powdered dyes mixed into acetone, dripped and applied onto a bed of clear Elmer's glue. I will be manipulating that with a straw by blowing the patterns and the various shapes into the glue and allowing that to settle into the, uh, the design that I'm looking for and the colors that I'm looking for. A disc will then be applied into that glue and it'll rest for about 40 hours and you guys will see exactly how it comes out and the entire process start to finish. So hopefully after this one video you will know exactly how to make this happen for yourselves. We see a lot of awesome glue dyes out there, a ton of different artists are doing these and it's really not that hard, okay? I am by no means experienced in this. In fact, to be perfectly honest, I've only dyed one disc using this method, but you've been looking at it since the video started. It is the Opto Ballista that you see in front of you right here. Let's take a quick look at it, and you can see that first time out, I got some pretty epic results that I am more than happy with. I think this thing looks super rad. I love the, the contrast of the black in there. I love the way the pattern's held. I like the fact that you can be in more intentional with this type of uh, design process and this technique than you can be with some of the other ones that I've showed you guys. I still love my old conditioner and shampoo dyes. I still do them. I still like the results, but they are much more set it up, hope for the best, and then you know see what happens kind of a vibe in that tutorial that I showed you guys a couple years ago. A lot of you have watched that, which is awesome, and I'm sure a lot of you did use that to make discs. I've seen a ton of different people uh, sending me pictures and tagging me in posts that they've used that technique to dye their first disc and all that kind of stuff is super rad. I love seeing it and I wanted to make another video so you guys can learn another technique and do the same thing. Tag me in your pictures of the of your discs and your results if you use this tutorial. Tag me in pictures of the results on Instagram. I would love to be able to share them on my Disc Golf Nerd Dyes page. I'll share them in my story on my main Instagram as well so please definitely send those over. Let me know in the comments down below how this worked out for you, if you have any questions that I somehow don't cover in this video. But even though I've only done one disc with this, I feel like I have a pretty uh, good handle of how to do it, and you guys can see the results, and you're gonna see exactly what I do here and what happens. It might be terrible, it might not come out nearly as good as the first one, I have no idea, but you guys are gonna come along for the ride and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to make this happen for yourselves and all of the different materials that you need and all the different things you need to know about this process. Before we get too deep into the video, I wanted to send a quick thank you shout out to InfiniteDiscs.com for being my main retail sponsor on the channel in 2021. Please use the code DiscGolfNerd at checkout. You'll get yourself a discount and you'll also help support the channel because some of the proceeds of those sales will come back to help support the channel financially to help us make more content, more videos, and take in more gear to review and all that kind of stuff. So I really appreciate Infinite and all the people that have been using my code to get your gear. Definitely check check that out. Let's get this guy out of the way and then we'll start talking about some of the stuff that we need. Of course, you need glue. I got this at Target. It is just Elmer's clear school glue, safe, non-toxic. It was about 20 bucks for the gallon. I have uh, since realized that you can actually get this stuff definitely cheaper from other places and different brands and stuff. And it seems like Michael's has some off-brand stuff that seems to be really cheap. I don't see how it will be much different in terms of the results you get, but if you want to exactly duplicate what I'm doing here, I'm using the Elmer's glue because that's what I found at the store. Next thing you're going to need, I got these online. I definitely recommend these. These are uh, already been so nice to have, and I wish I would have gotten them sooner for spin dyes and other, other things too. But these are glass dropper vials here that... They come with labels, they come with the, the dropper and everything that you need, and they come with little funnels as well so you can uh, fill them up more easily. And all I did was I put powdered dye into these. I put a good, you know, 
I don't know, quarter inch or so in the bottom. I didn't measure. And then I just filled up the rest with acetone. Um, so we have Pro-Chem Turquoise. We have Pro-Chem Aqua Green, Aquatic Green, which is kind of a bluish green. Um, then we have probably my favorite Pro-Chem color, which is the Neon Lemon Zest Yellow. And here you can get a better uh, sense of, of what's happening with this. Basically, the powder dye is in there, and if I shake it up, you'll see it'll get suspended in there for a little bit and then it'll eventually settle back down so you don't really need to from what i understand and from what i can gather based on my own experience and uh, other videos that i've seen this will settle back down to the bottom and only so much of that dye is going to actually penetrate into the acetone liquid itself so as you just kind of let these settle and, and you can see it already kind of settled down to the bottom so i'm just going to use the dropper to suck it from the top here and not down where that sediment is and in that in that respect you really don't need to measure the amount of dye that you put in here and i believe i see absolutely no reason why over time i couldn't just continue to add acetone to this i already have once i topped it off once and it basically does the exact same thing it'll settle down to the bottom if you shake it up more of it will interact with that acetone but it can only absorb so much and the rest of it will just sit on the bottom until you add more acetone at least that seems to be how it's working so far i highly recommend using these uh it's just really nice and also glass for acetone um if you put acetone directly into a plastic container from what i understand it is very likely that it could melt through that so definitely want to be careful with acetone as well it's flammable and all that kind of stuff but what happens here in this process from what i can understand as well is essentially the glue sits in the in the in this basically just an ultimate frisbee i'm going to use for this i drip the acetone dye mixture on top of it and what happens is the acetone then evaporates re relatively quickly into the air and then the dye is left suspended into the glue now due to the thickness and the kind of viscosity of the glue it will hold those patterns and those shapes um, pretty well where if you put it into a more runny uh, liquid of some kind it would all just blend together right so the dye particles end up kind of suspended in the glue and that's what allows you to kind of make these designs and shapes like that and have them hold those shapes until you uh, dunk the dye uh, or dunk the disc in there and let it start soaking up that dye so dropper bottles powdered dye once again you don't really need to measure them I would just put a nice coating of it on the bottom there, fill it up with acetone, let as much of it sink in as it's going to, then kind of shake it up before you use it. We got the school glue, oh, knocking stuff over. That's another reason why <laughs> these are nice is because that didn't spill when I knocked it over. Be super careful with any dyes, as always, for any dye tutorial. If you drip this all over your counter or something, you're not getting it all out. It's gonna be a big problem if you knock over one of these bottles. So be uh, extra careful. I'm actually only really filming it on my counter, or uh, only doing this on my counter is because I wanna film it for you guys otherwise there's no way I would be doing this here I'd be doing it on my beat up folding table that I use for for stuff like this whenever whenever possible by the way these eyedroppers come in like a case of 12 that I that I ordered I believe these are the two ounce uh, bottles let me see if the box says so yes two ounce glass dropper bottles set of 12 for this particular one i decided to do more of a blue green yellow motif and i'm going to be adding some eye dye poly jet black into there as well to try to get some of that sharp contrast between the dark and the light so that's probably about all you need to know so far in terms of materials i'll also have a uh, metal straw that I'll be using later on to blow into the glue and direct the dye and kind of move it around a little bit and the disc is going to be another uh, just white kind of opaque white opto ballista this ballista has the stamp removed with acetone previously and also used the acetone to thoroughly clean the surface of the disc and then i used hot soapy water and a sponge as well to clean this thing so it's imperative that you do that from my perspective i've heard from a lot of folks that have had trouble getting dye to sink into a disc because a lot of modern discs they use a type of oil to help remove the discs from the molding machines and i believe that oil will kind of still be on the disc 
when it shows up. This is another side tip, has nothing to do with dies as well, is that if you get a disc in the mail, a brand new disc straight from the factory, I definitely recommend you wash it with soap and water. It'll probably feel better as well and grip better in your hands, but it is imperative that you wash the disc and make sure it is clean and that there's not any crap, any oils, fingerprints, dirt on it, or else it's all going to have problems with the way it wants to uh, absorb the dye and interact with the surface of this glue bed. So make sure your disc is nice and clean and you won't have any issues with that. And that's pretty much all you need to know. Other than that, I just have an Aviator Ultimate Disc that I'm gonna pour the glue into. Let's get into it. It's a lot of setup, but hey, this is the stuff you guys need to know before you get into this. And you guys know I like to talk, so let's continue on with the show. All right, we've readjusted slightly here. It's not gonna be the easiest thing in the world for me to film and show you guys, but I'm trying my best, so bear with me. Doing these, these dyes at times is really tough to try to film properly, just based on uh, the angles and all that kind of stuff. It's a little tricky. But we'll do our best. Let's move some stuff around. I have my dies off in this pan here just in case any drips happen. Try to keep it off my countertop. And here we come in with the glue. We're going to do a little, little slow pour, probably in the same general spot, and just let it kind of slowly move its way out. I know for a fact that a lot of dye, uh, glue bed dye guys, will use a torch to pop bubbles and kind of help prepare the surface of the glue. Um, I do not have a torch that I'm, I'm not worried about that too much so I'm just gonna let it ride. If I see any bubbles later on I may uh, intentionally go after them and try to pop them but I probably won't even bother because me personally I never really mind the kind of randomness that a, a bubble here and there or a little texture you might get from bubbles does to a dye. It doesn't really bother me. Okay. Need a little bit more. There's a big bubble that I saw just fall in there, so I'll probably get rid of that. And that should be about good. Now, it's a little bit difficult for me to tell you guys exactly how much glue to put in your Frisbee or your, your container here, but it should be pretty obvious whether or not you have enough to cover the bottom and hold as much dye as you want and all that kind of stuff. But let's see. Yeah, it's hard to say. Probably about a quarter of an inch, though. Okay, now with the glue settled down, I'm going to try to see if I can find any of these bubbles and pop them with this skewer, but I don't know how well that's going to work. I can see them. There's a few on there. I'm just going to let them ride. But again, if you guys are real concerned about bubbles, the way you want to deal with it is like a creme brulee torch, essentially, and torch the surface of the bed, and it'll help pop those bubbles. Okay, here we go. The glue is in, and I've let it settle, and now here comes some dye. Another thing, though, to keep in mind, though, when you're considering the way you're trying to build this bed is that you're not obviously going to hit the, the outer edge. So it's kind of nice, though, in a way, because by the time you get ready to drop your disc in here, you can kind of pick the area that has the most you know patterning or colors that you want and put the disc in there but just kind of keep that in mind because obviously if you have really cool stuff happening on the outside rim here it might not actually be in where the disc is going to uh, be sitting once you get it in there so i think what i'm going to do is start off with some black kind of in stripes i'm going to try to do lines of black straight down this way but the thing that happens here that's quite interesting is it spreads out and it kind of like blossoms. It's like a blooming thing. It's, it's, it's quite fascinating to watch. And again, a very fun dye technique in general due to that because you can be intentional with it and it's very just kind of visually satisfying to, to watch it happen. There it goes. Just kind of weird suction issue with my dropper. So I'm gonna do a line like that. And you can see the way those blossom when they hit the glue. Do another line down this way. And this is just to get some separation between the colors and to get some of that black in there, again, for that really interesting contrast that happens. Drip here, I'm gonna try to get pretty close to my glue as well. I don't want it to splash onto my counter here at all. One thing I have noticed is that if you get dye accidentally on your counter or surface you don't want it to be on if you act quickly and uh, really get on it with some rubbing alcohol you can usually mitigate some of the issue but 
that's only for small spills. I've never had, you know, knock on wood, I've never had like a really bad situation where I dropped like a full vial or a bottle of dye or a little container full of it or something. That would be no bueno. Okay, so you're going to see, I'm, get, I'm trying to get a decent amount of black in here, by the way, as you can't tell. But this stuff's going to kind of sink in, and it's kind of uh, going to change a little bit. And then also, when you drop other colors in here, they're going to kind of push it around. So I'm going to let that sit for just a minute and see how it goes. You can also gently move it around that way, which is a technique I might employ. You want to make sure you have a nice flat surface to let this thing sit on in the end. And you probably want to finish the die. Like I'm going to move over to where this thing's going to rest on my counter um, out of the way for, for the 40 hours or so. Um, before I actually drop the disc in it, we're going to move over to there so I can finish up the design there and see how, uh, see how it's going to look you know, on the actual final resting place so it doesn't shift after I drop the disc in it. All right, that's all the black I want for right now, for sure. And um, I'm wondering if I went too far with it. But it is not uh, important now. It's just going to be what it's going to be. Now I'm going to try to get some of this turquoise in this line here in between all that black. And we'll see what happens. Seems like it's kind of leaning a little bit away from the where the camera is sitting because some of the dye is getting a little stronger on those farther farther sides. Part of the fun of dyes, as always, though, is you know trying the stuff and and seeing how it goes and what what actually happens. You never really know how it's going to go. I was uh, I was quite thrilled when I pulled that other ballista out of the glue because I really had no idea what to expect while I was uh, in the process of actually trying to do that that particular dye. Let's do some yellow as well. It's going a little weird. I don't know how this is going to go. This yellow is really faint and you don't see it very much but once it gets on the disc it's like so nice. It's like a highlighter cheat code it's just beautiful i really love this freaking yellow it's just such a rad color for a disc it really makes the disc like legitimately easier to see out there on the course which i just think is rad and i am gonna drip some yellow on that side as well to try to mix in with the blue and see what happens but i don't like what's happening over here this is dis this is distressing me the black seems to be mixing in and making kind of like a purple or something. I'm also a little worried about some of the residual dye that was on this frisbee. Um, but we're just going to have to do what we're going to do here. We're going to see what happens. Now, some green. Where is the green going to go in all of this mess? I'm going to put some on this far side here. That's looking interesting. Oh, another accidental drip job. I'm a mess here. I'm getting getting stuff everywhere. Let's see. I'm gonna put a little bit of this in this side as well. Okay, that might be all the dye I put in here for a bit. Let me uh, let me assess what's happening. This is going definitely much differently than my first one. And again, this is uh, part of the fun, part of why I brought you guys along for the ride, because who knows what's going to happen here. You'll also see sometimes like the dyes will look kind of faint, and when you get the second color onto it, like cool stuff starts to happen where it starts to kind of dig in and change what's happening with it. So, that looks pretty interesting so far. I'm not sure if I'm happy with it or not. Let's start moving it around a little bit. So I just have this metal straw here, and almost certainly going to cut the volume or something when I get too close to, to start doing this because you guys don't need to hear me breathing and blowing on this glue.
so hopefully you guys can see what's happening as I as I blow into that. It kind of pushes into the into the die and then it seals back up onto itself. So that's how you end up getting these like dragged lines like that. I'm not feeling like I'm getting the colors that I really want to happen here. I feel like this is getting too dark and you know this is actually legitimately um, could be a dud. I might end up dumping this out and not putting a disc in it. We're just gonna have to see how it kind of develops. Okay, status update. You can see we're at here. We got definitely a dark and stormy vibe happening. So I'm going to get a lot more yellow into this mix. Um, whether that's going to be helpful or not, we're going to find out. If I could, if I could promote kind of a situation where there's like a really bright highlighter, bluish, greenish yellows, and then black as well that would make me happy and that's pretty much kind of where we're headed here and where we're hoping to go so that's kind of what I'm going to try to promote here by getting more of this yellow into the mix and now once you kind of move the the die around to begin with then it, it opens up these new pockets where you can add more and see all the different changes that occur when that happens once again it's a very fun uh, visually pleasing and, and active kind of die method you know you have a lot of control here where you can kind of yeah, play with it a lot a lot more and tweak it a little bit. Oh, I think I might have touched the surface of the glue there for a second. That's not ideal. Maybe y'all are watching this to find out what not to do. I can't I can't stop that if that's the case. Pile. Oh wow. Some of these little black pockets when you get that yellow in there just really start to kind of blow up. Interesting. Very nice. Seems like it's better to uh, try to use up all of the all the dye that you sucked up with the dropper at a time rather than try to carry it back across the bed with, with dye still in it. It definitely seems like it's pretty easy to uh, cause issues with that. All right, more colors. Back to the turquoise over here. Trying to hit a good patch of it. Yeah, okay. I think good things are happening now. We're going to find out. That time I could tell that the, the liquid the, of the acetone hasn't quite evaporated before I tried to blow on that one so it didn't really work the same way I wanted it to. That's fine. Let that sit for a second here. Also, kind of half watching the uh, World Championships coverage in the background here. World's week as I record this video. I'm really liking this black ridge that we've built down the middle here, and I think that can definitely cause some interesting things to happen. I'm a little bit worried about the overall darkness, though, but it's really hard to tell if that's going to be as big of a problem as I think it might be until you get it out.
We're definitely committed now though. Our disc is going in this bed. I mean, I have to see how this goes. Good, bad, terrible. We're just not gonna know until that disc comes out. I'm thinking more color. I'm thinking I want a little bit more color. I think I'm gonna do a little bit more green in here, just very sparingly in a couple of spots. And then I think maybe a touch more yellow. Then we're gonna move over to our final resting place. And, oh, there's a nice spot for some green. And once we get over there, then we're gonna do the final move around, drop the disc, and we're gonna see what happens. You can also hopefully kind of see that by the time you get these patterns set up, sometimes you can like deliberately drop stuff right into that pocket. And then you know you can kind of let that evaporate for a second and then kind of blow into that pocket there. And I can try to drag this green. Ooh, careful. Try and drag this green up into there just to see what happens. Now, since I haven't found a situation yet where too much of this neon yellow was a problem, the lemon zest yellow from ProChem, I'm going to get a little bit more even in here to try to really pop that highlighter contrast between the blacks that are we clearly have established in this disc and the other colors again it's like a cheat code to make other colors neon it's uh it's quite quite fascinating how well it all works the lemon zest yellow mixed with the pro chem magenta makes like the most epic highlighter orange that's just really really nice too that i want to try to mess with more in the future Also, just want to real quick give a shout out to my retail sponsor, Infinite Discs. If you guys are looking for any plastic or bags or anything that you need, if you're trying to get some discs that you can dye, you can see pictures of all the discs I have on there to make sure they're the right color for you. If you want a white disc or a pink disc or whatever for a particular dye you're trying to do, you can go check that out. Use my code DISCGOLFNERD at checkout. You'll get yourself a discount. You'll also help financially support the channel because some of those uh, profits will be shared with us. So I appreciate them and I appreciate you guys coming along for the ride. What this here glue bed die. Oh man, I touched the glue again. Killing me. Ridiculous. Now we're just getting crazy with the highlighter with the with the yellow. Now things are just getting a little bit foolish, but you know, we're committed and this is just this is just what's happening right now. Okay guys, just deal with it. We're going full bore space lego neon yellow. And uh, it's just gonna it's gonna be what it's gonna be. All right, guys, we're done. I'm not adding any more color to this thing. We are going to close up these jars, carefully put them back in the case with their brethren, and uh, then we're gonna just move her over to where she's gonna live for the next 40 hours, and then finish the um, kind of swirling and straw manipulation in that area. So let's uh, stay tuned and I'll be right back. Okay, we now have the glue bed sitting over here on the kind of unused portion of my counter where I let these dies rest. And from here, we're going to try to finish the little bit of swirling that I want to do to make this thing right where I want it to be. I'm not going to go super far with it though. I think we have some cool things happening and I don't want to over swirl, but the world is your oyster. Do whatever you want to with your dies. If, be artistic, express yourself, have fun, be creative, and if it comes out looking cool and you like it, throw it in your bag and just be happy with that because that's, <laughs> that's all you can really do. And every time you do it, you're gonna learn something different and kind of uh, get better at it over time as well. don't want to mess with this area too too much because I'm liking it and I'm not liking this so I think the disc is going to go more on this side of our bed here I want to carefully swing this around so I can manipulate this section a little bit more
kind of increased my velocity at the end there to really blow that point out because once again the, the design will settle back into that channel over a little bit of uh, time here. I have seen um, people like Nowski dies, they'll just pick it up and just roll it around and it'll kind of swirl in all kinds of different patterns. Of course you could just get in here with a skewer or a toothpick and drag some colors around but I really like the way this uh, blowing techniques work. This ends up being a little bit more of a kind of organic swirl type setup that, uh, situation and uh, patterning to it that I, that I like quite a bit when it's all said and done. I'm going to have to cut out so much of this if you guys can see my face every time I dip down to blow into this. <laughs> I'm going to cut it all out if that's, if that's happening. Okay. I think we're there guys. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to swing this around to the orientation that I want just so I can visually look at it. I'm looking at it straight down this way, not on the angle that you guys are on. Um, and where I want this thing to go. Once again, clean. Stamp wiped. No dust or dirt left on this thing. I try to keep it kind of protected. Um, after I wash it and clean it if I'm not going to be dyeing it straight away So I'm trying to keep the dust off of it. Maybe I'll give it one more quick wipe Should be okay. I'm also Gonna take a quick look and see if I find any really obvious bubbles that I want to deal with but I'm not seeing them. I didn't see them last time when they were there <laughs> So whatever guys, I'm gonna slowly Super gently lean this back a little bit to try to drag that section out just a bit and then let it settle back. And we're almost ready to dump this bad boy and I'm almost ready to let y'all go. Once I get this thing in here, 40 hours is what I'm going to do. And it seems like 40 hours is good. Um, that's what I did for the last one and I was really happy with it. I don't see how it could have sunk in much more than it did, I'll say that. Alright guys, hopefully you can see what's happening here. Hopefully there's not too much glare. It's kind of tricky with clear glue. But that's what the bed looks like in the end. You can see there's lots of texture levels and layers to the color as well. And if this doesn't turn out really kind of dark and muddy like navy blues and stuff, I think I'll be I think I'll be happy, but we really don't know until we drop it in. Let it sit for 40 hours and pull it back out. So I'm going to try to put you guys down again carefully. Just got a couple of pieces of blue tape folded up into two little points there. That will help me hold this thing and place it on an angle down into this bed and the orientation that I want. Now, if you're weird like me, you're probably going to want to see where the stamp used to be and kind of line up your design <laughs> Um, in orientation to that because even when I remove the stamp I still know where it is I can still see the glare of it and it still bothers me so I still want to know that that's kind of sitting in line in a, in a kind of a cohesive way so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot for like right on this edge here I'll get some of this in the corner I'll get our line here hopefully pull in some of this around that edge and yeah, I'm going to put it down on an angle to allow it to kind of fall away. Kind of like you're placing a steak in a pan to sear it in a professional kitchen. Place it down, let it fall away. And that way for this particular glue bed, it will help prevent any air bubbles from forming underneath it as it settles into the goo. Remove my handles orientate the way I want we're going in oh I can see a bubble there it's too late there's nothing I'm going to do about it now and She's in, and I'm going to completely ignore this thing 
try my best to not do anything to it. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to bump into it. I don't want to drop any groceries on it, carrying them into the house <laughs> after Trader Joe's tomorrow. None of that stuff. I want this thing to be as undisturbed as it can possibly be. Considering that this video is probably going to clock in into like an hour or something like that. And, and even after I uh, cut out a bunch of footage, I think you guys are okay that this is the end of the process. In 40 hours, I'll pull it out. I'm not going to show you guys the rinsing off process. I'm going to take you directly to the end results. Thank you so much for watching. And we're almost to the end here. Stay tuned. You'll see how this thing came out. And hopefully be armed with all of the knowledge that you need to duplicate this process for yourself. Cheers. All right, guys, we did it. We are done. The disc is out. I rinsed it off in warm water, used some soap as well and a sponge to get all the glue off of that. I actually, of course, did not film that part of the process just because I figured you guys could probably figure that out. It's pretty self-explanatory. The glue is a little bit annoying to clean up after, but I think the results of the dyes are worth some of the extra effort. So let's take another final look at these. First of all, this one that I died off camera that you guys did not see the entire process of. I might show some of what the bed looked like or something like that somewhere in the video. So you might have seen some of that. But either way, really like this one and the results on this one in particular. I really like all of this. This whole section here is just quite rad in my opinion. The oranges and the super bright yellows with the contrast of the black. Good looking disc there. And here is the one we did together. So it definitely has like an alien kind of nebula vibe going on to it. I'm not too mad at it overall. I would say it's darker than I was expecting or not actually about as dark as I expected. It was darker than I wanted it to get but we kind of saw it coming based on the way the bed was looking but it still pulled a lot of cool greens and yellows and blues in there. It's kind of like a marble look to it. I also I really love this this section here it's got a very cool kind of aquatic textured color in there that I really like I like this little weird section that happened around the where the relief for the stamp was this little bit of a blue run here this section here there are a couple of areas like right here where it got a little bit more of like a brown kind of grass green than I was really looking for but all in all I think you'll agree it's a pretty interesting looking disc you can see some of the bubbles here that we got but none of those are bothering me and that is our kind of space nebula alien opto ballista if you guys have any questions for me that i somehow did not address in this very long video just leave them down in the comments down below and i'll do my best to answer them thank you so much to everybody who supports me my viewers my fans my subscribers all the people who will help support me by hooking me up with plastic to review and other gear Huge shout out to my Patreon support team as well. You guys are amazing and continue to help support me, have my back. So I really appreciate all the support from all the different angles. You guys are awesome and I'll talk to you very soon. Cheers.